Exactly. I believe it's in the valley where he got that. Amen. I believe it's in the valley where he wrote most, if not all, not all of them, because some of them he wrote in a cave, but a lot of the book of Psalms. Right. Amen. Where he was strumming on his harp and he was singing praises to God. Yeah. Actually, I guess if you want to get technical about it, when he's in the cave, he's actually in the valley too. Because we're talking about more than just being in a place, a plateau on the regular, you know, on the earth. We're talking about trials and turmoil that you go through. Right. You see, whenever I was a kid and I was a child, I was being raised up, you know, in the Pentecostal church that I was in. More times, you know, a lot of times, a preacher, when he preached along these lines, they'd have a porter scribe, you know, and they'd cast the thing up on the wall and they would draw hills and valleys like this. You see, I grew up knowing that life is part of that. You ain't always going to be on the mountaintop. Right. That there are hills and there are valleys. There are mountains and there are valleys. There are mountains and there are valleys. You remember that, Mama? They used to draw that all the time. Several preachers would preach on that. Sister Bonnie remembers that. They would draw that little diagram. How that there, you ain't always going to be. Because see, if you don't know that, see this jokers that we got now that's preaching, they claim that if you're going through anything, you must not be in God's will. Oh, well, they could have really enlightened Paul and Silas when they were in prison at midnight. Amen. Right. They could have told them, listen, you guys must not be in God's will. Really? They could have spoke to John the Revelator out of the Isle of Patmos when he'd been put in exclusion there and said, listen, you must not be in God's will. In reality, he was about to get the revelation of Jesus Christ that no one had ever got before. Come on, great. Yeah. Come on. There he is in a valley experience yeah. out on the Isle of Patmos. Hey man, he's been he's been set out there. He's been set apart from everybody else right. in a place of seclusion. Uh -huh. And you know how easy it would have been for John to say, "Look at this. Yeah. I'm the only disciple that went all the way to the cross with him. I took care of his mama after he died, and here I am on this rocky old island, dusty, filthy, moving rocks all day, working in a rock quarry. Why is this happening to me?" But that ain't what we find when we look over there in the book of Revelation. As a matter of fact, it almost starts out with these words. And I, John, was in the Spirit on the Lord's day. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It, it's easy for you to press through. Actually, there ain't no press. When you're on the mountaintop, it's easy for you to feel the Spirit uh, and to feel the Holy Ghost goosebumps. Uh, honey, but it takes some pressing when you're in the valley to lay aside your aches and your pains and your grief and your woe and say, God, I don't understand it, but I'm going to pray. Praise you anyway. I don't understand it, but I know your name is still holy. Your word is still true, and I will worship you. Amen. That's good, preacher. Take something then. Yes, sir. That's right. And there he is. Wouldn't he blind the book? History says, the Bible don't, but history says they bought him in oil and they put out his eyes. Yeah, yeah. And then they put him out there on the Isle of Patmos. Things wasn't looking too good, was it? But he said, I, John, was in the Spirit on the Lord's day. Amen. I could preach this morning. Go ahead. It takes far less than being bold and oil and our eyes put out to keep us from getting in the Spirit on the Lord's day. Yes, sir. Amen. Well, that's the truth. Matter of fact, can't hardly get some of us off the couch All right, on the Lord's day. Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. My goodness, oh surely if you if you if you make it through the sin series, you can make it through this. Sometimes I wonder, amen, just how much tribulation we'd be able to take. You better hope the rapture takes place pretty quick. Amen. Come on. Amen. Yeah. We got people saying, Oh, I'll choose God. I'll stand for him during the tribulation. Yeah, you can't stand for him now. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. You can't stand for him now. You can't take the little wimps and whimpers, the things that goes on in our life causes you to mumble and grumble and complain. Right. Yeah. Amen. Oh. And I put me in that barrel too. Yeah. It don't take much to make us uncomfortable. Right. And when we get uncomfortable. We're so spoiled, we don't like it. Amen. Amen. That's the truth. We don't like it. But John, in his valley experience, <laughs> said, I was in the Spirit of the Lord's day and I heard a voice. Yeah. Like the sound of mighty waters. Yeah. And he said, I turned around to see. Now listen, if history's right and he was blind in the natural, he must have seen this in the Spirit or God restored his eyesight one. 
Because the Bible says he turned and he saw, amen, the, the King of Kings and the Lamb of God. Amen. amen. Hallelujah. My goodness. Praise the Lord. In the valley of the shadow of death, yeah. he restores my soul. He feeds me in the valley. Amen. Yes, There's food to be found in the valley. Amen. If we just shut up long enough, quit complaining and look around, yeah. we'll realize that the Lord has something for us mm -hmm. right where we're at. Yeah. Oh, the enemy thinks he's going to get you. Yes, sir. But if you can ever come to the realization that God is God, circumstances change, but God don't. That's it, brother. When things was going good for you, God was on the throne. Absolutely. When things don't look so good for you, Sister Cindy, God's still on the throne. Exactly. Amen. Amen. And if we can get a hold of the Word in those times that... See, David said... What did he say in Psalms? Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. You see, that rod and staff has a whole other meaning for them than it does for us today. Right. We're thinking, you know, well, he had a stick, you know, that he leaned on. That helped him to get along. And that's some truth to that. But on that stick, they had carved testimonies of times that God had moved for them. I got a rod and staff this morning, amen. amen. And I can look in there and read testimony after testimony. I can read where a man was putting the lines in and the lines didn't harm him, amen. I can read where three Hebrew boys was putting a fiery furnace and the fire didn't harm them, amen. I can read where Paul and Silas was put in jail at midnight to shut them up and they got the Philippian jailer saved, amen. I can read where John, the revelator, was put on the outer Patmos as we just spoke about and he got a revelation of God. Absolutely. Oh, you got somebody calling my cell phone. Devil. <laughs> Devil's calling. Listen to this. Another valley. I'm trying to hurry. The valley of decision. The Bible says in Joel, the third chapter, the 14th verse, multitudes, multitudes in the valley of decision. Uh -huh. For the day of the Lord is near in the valley of decision. That word decision there means a determination. Yeah. It means a threshing, a threshing. Let me say that again. A threshing. You know what a threshing is? That's where they try to separate the wheat. You know, they had something they called a threshing floor. Yeah. They would sift it. That's exactly right. See, Satan thinks if he can get you in the valley of decision, yeah. the place where you feel like you're being sifted, the place where you are faced with a choice, yeah. and I can get them there. I can get them there. Come on. If they slow down, you know, they've been they've been hooping and hollering and Pentecostal holy rolling and jumping the pew and wait till they slow down. Yeah. Wait until God's spirit ain't no longer being poured out like the but by the bucket fulls. Yeah. 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 But when it gets to the place where they're thinking, man, I ain't felt nothing. Yeah. yeah. I ain't somebody said, you know, if I couldn't feel God, I wouldn't live for him. Well, you're crazy. Come on. Because if you're living by the feeling, you ain't gonna live for him very long. That's right. Whether I'm saved today don't have nothing to do with whether I got up and felt goosebumps. It has to do with whether I still got faith in Him and His Word. Right. Amen. That's true. There'll be times in your journey that you don't feel the Spirit like you used to feel it. Amen. There'll be times in your journey where you feel like, I don't even know why I'm going on, but you go on anyway because of faith in His Word yeah. and what He's done for you, what He's going to do, and His promises are for you. That's Sinking true. your teeth into the Word of God that all things work together for my good. Mm -hmm. And I will give thanks in all things. Mm -hmm. So He likes to get you in the valley of decision. Amen? Yes, sir. Listen to this. <clears throat> Brother Mike preached not too long ago. This is the third valley if you want to write it down. Brother Mike preached not too long ago on the valley of weeping. The valley of Baca. That word Baca means weep. It means to bemoan. It means to wail. It means to complain. All right. It means to make lamentation. It means to mourn with tears and weeping. But the Bible says in Psalms 84 and 5, Blessed is the man whose strength is in thee, in whose heart are the ways of them, who passing through the valley of Baca, the valley of weeping, make it a well. Did you hear that? Yes, sir. Finds a well in the valley. Yeah. Oh, I mean, there's water in the valley like you won't never get anywhere else. Amen. 
There's food in the valley like you won't get nowhere else. Amen. There is spiritual growth and maturity in the valley that you will not get nowhere else. Oh, right. Amen. Right. You don't get your muscles strong by just sitting around doing nothing. You got to work them. That's right, brother. Amen. That's true. And that's the way it is with us. Amen. People live on the mountaintop so long they become spiritual wimps. Right. Amen. Come on. Don't have to do nothing. That's what we get preachers preaching today. Right. All God wants for you is His best. The most money you can get, the nicest house you can get, and then whenever you're going through something, you hear that and you're thinking, man, God must hate me. I must really be in a bad place here. I must not be doing right. Yeah. The fourth valley. We preached on this before. The valley of Ono. Right. The valley of compromise. Come on. <clears throat> The Valley of Compromise. Mm. <clears throat> that word ono means wealth. It means goods. It means strength. It means substance. Yeah. See if he can get you to compromise. What did the enemy want Nehemiah to do when he was working on the wall? He said, would you come down and meet us over here in the plain of ono? That word plain means valley. Mm. Meet us in the plain of ono and let's talk about this. Mm. He wanted him to compromise. Who knows? They may have been wanting to offer him some money. Right. Amen. True. They didn't want to offer him some money to come. I wonder how much this morning, how much money somebody have to offer us to compromise. Mm. Amen. Amen. I hope there wouldn't be enough money in the world to get us to do it. Oh, but the right. devil don't know that That's until right. he tries you. Come on. Amen. Let's see. Let's see if you'll compromise for the favor of man. Mm -hmm. Let's see if you'll compromise today. So that you can get in that big denomination. So that you can get more people in your pews instead of preaching to 12 or 15 yeah. every week. Amen. Yeah. Let's see if you compromise. Give a little bit. You ain't got to preach those hard sermons. Right. Get up there and get you something from Joel or, or one of the other preachers and say, you're okay. I'm okay. We're all okay. Pat your neighbor on the, on the back and let's all hug our Muslim brothers. Oh. Amen. Yeah. If somebody don't teach us about sin, if somebody don't teach us about the valley, and every time we go through something, we're going to think, man, God is really beating up on me. He has really tortured me. I, I must have really done something awful here. Listen, the valleys and the mountains are all part of life. Whether you're born again or whether you ain't, you're going to go through times that the way is just not as easy. Amen? The way is just not as smooth as it once was. The valleys are a little darker. Amen? Amen? The valleys are the places where you just feel like you don't know if you can put one foot in front of the other or not, but you get down deep and get a hold of the Word of God. Amen? And begin to quote it. Begin to, listen, encourage yourself in the Lord. If you find yourself in the valley and contemplate and get given up, get out the old King James Version and knock the dust off of it and begin to read how much God loves you and the promises that He's given you. And listen, He's got an expected end for you today. Go to the end of the book and read how the story ends. It might encourage you this morning Amen. to know that you don't lose. You win. Amen. You're a winner either way. So get a hold of those Scriptures. Yes, sir. This morning, because you're probably going to need them this week. You might need them this afternoon. Amen. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God and are called according to His purpose. Rejoice evermore. Pray without ceasing. In everything, give thanks. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Amen. Anything that comes in your life, if God allowed it, He didn't, let it, he didn't allow it to destroy you, all right. but to make you stronger. Amen. Amen. I like that song we sang, This Valley is for Me. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. And that's the truth. Whatever place you're in. Right. Do you remember what Joseph told his brethren after they had sold him and he went to jail and he'd been falsely accused by Potiphar's wife? And Finally at the end, whenever he was right-hand man to Pharaoh and was in control of all the goods, he looked at his brothers and he said, he said Satan meant it for evil. You meant it for evil, but God mm -hmm. meant it for good. That's right. Amen. Yeah. God used all of those things that happened in 